Good morning. Welcome back. Welcome back to our second dose of prayer. <laughs> All right. And so for prayer, um, for this walk is um, strength. I've been led to pray about strength. Amen. And um, just thinking about a lot of things that is um, happening. Um, within the world, just within our personal lives, whether uh, there's uh, sickness, whatever the case may be, um, we're going to pray about strength. And so just coming from Psalms, sorry, uh, Psalms 28, verse 7, the Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. Father, we just thank you, Father, for this time, for this gathering, Father, of your word and just prayer, Father. We thank you, Father, for you are Lord of lords. You are King of kings. Yes. We thank you, Father, for strength, Father. Yes. We thank you, Father, for your strength, Father. Amen. Not our strength, Father, because we can't rely on our own strength, Father, but we're relying on you, Father, to help us through. We're relying on you to help us to stand up, Father, when things are coming against us. We are relying on you, Father, for the very strength that we need, Father, to go day by day, Father. Whatever the circumstance may be, whatever the trial, whatever the tribulation, Father, we are relying upon your strength, Father. We thank you, Father, that you are our very shield, just like we think of a shield blocking things, Father. We thank you, Father, that you are blocking things that are not for us in the spirit as well as the natural, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, that you are our shield, that we could come against the enemy. We could come against the things that he has plotted against us, Father. But we thank you, Father, that you have the victory. And because if you have the victory, we have the victory, Father. We thank you, Father, that our hearts will be filled with joy no matter what the trial, no matter what the situation is, Father. It may be hard, but we will be having our hearts filled with joy. Our, ha our hearts be leaping with joy, Father, knowing that Word, 
word, that we will carry your light. We will carry your word wherever we may go, Father. So just have your way up in this place, not just this place, Father. After we leave this place, that we will continue to carry your light, Father. That we will continue to carry you, Father, in us, Father, because you are our shield. You are our guidance. You are our direction. You fill us up, Father, each and every day. So have your way, Father, in us, Father. That spirit of dismay got to go, got to leave in the mighty name of Jesus. That spirit of just doubt, it got to go, it got to leave in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that you, Father, will have us to hope in you. We thank you, Father, that you, Father, will have us to be strengthened by you, Father. So have your way, Father, in our lives. We thank you, Father. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. about the definition of purpose because the month the prayer um, theme for this month is purpose Amen. and what struck me was she said that the antonym or the opposite of purpose is irrelevant mm -hmm. and it, it hit me because I feel like sometimes we feel irrelevant like mm. we look at our life and we say oh you know I feel like I'm going through this I'm going through that and little old me you know we kind of be like man like my little problems you know they're so yeah. irrelevant or he doesn't really care or yeah. i don't want to bring this to god but what i heard is that there is nothing irrelevant about us ha. Man. And, and so the song his eyes on the sparrow immediately came to my mind because we think about you know a sparrow when the last time anybody seen a sparrow <laughs> i can't even imagine i can't even put in a picture of like what the sparrow looks like but it's like if god even cares about the sparrow mm -hmm. feeds the sparrow clothes you know keeps him in a house he got a bird house somewhere in the tree you know he's covered right he doesn't have to worry about tomorrow's needs he doesn't have to stress about his past he is covered. So if God can even cover a sparrow, how much more can we be at peace Come on. knowing that our purpose is yeah. secure in him? Yeah. That if we lead, uh, if we, if we, um, if we try to lead our lives and say, God, you know, lead me, guide me, direct me, give me purpose, show me my purpose, that he will cover us. Amen. So I'm going to sing this song a cappella. Like I said, it just... It was just something that the Lord just said we needed to be reminded of today. Amen. 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 Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely? I 
Hallelujah. Nothing can take your place. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Hallelujah. This the next song, it says, So will I. So if all creation was made to worship him, so will I. Come on. If, if yeah. you know, if the rocks can cry out your name, then so will I. Yeah. Amen. So yeah. we are yeah. worshiping the God of creation. Yeah. We are made in his image yeah. to worship him Hallelujah. in fullness, in spirit, in truth, in love. So let's do that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. In the vapor of your breath, the planets 
the light of the world, or bend into darkness to die. And as you
powerful name that you'll ever say. Come on, say it again. Say Jesus. There's something about that name. There's something about that name. Come on, say it again. Say Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. section so you should be able to see it um, also quick announcements uh, I know a couple of people did say they still wanted to add to the list but today after service after we go off I'm gonna kind of explain I do have some sign up sheets for us to be able to sign up for uh, to help with buying gifts for our families that we chose I don't know if you happen to notice but the chimney is already stuck <laughs> Um, just a generosity of my sister, my natural sister, my oldest sister, she gave us so many things. We came in yesterday and pulled them out, and, and so you see the chimney is full and overflow. Um, also, there have been those that have generosity, generously given, so we've gotten almost $200 just in offering towards buying the gifts. Um, I'm going to show you some more and give you some of the details later, so we thank God for that. Um, also, just to uh, mention on that is next Sunday, ain't it? Um, next Sunday, yeah, seven, yes. yeah. So next Sunday is the seventeenth. So I need all hands that are able to help. We're gonna kind of have an assembly line going on packing up uh, gifts. One of the things I'm gonna just show it now before I go in. Uh, I got bags. So for we want to also just give each family a bag of groceries. Some, some, some basic necessities. So this is the bag for the groceries. And if we got to send out more than one bag, I got enough. Amen. I got enough. So more than enough. More than enough, because that's the God we serve. We serve the God of more than enough. Amen? Yeah. So uh, just super excited about that um, and, and just what God is doing in that arena. So I'm going to pray for the offering, and then I'm going to jump into the Word of God. Amen. Father, I thank you, we thank you, we honor you, we adore you, we just magnify your name. 
Um, Father, we, we are honored that you have chosen us as your people, that you have given us purpose, and that we are walking it out, even in those times where we don't even think we can, but you give us the strength, strength so that we are able to. And so, Father, we thank you for the generosity of your people that are giving both those that are in the house and those in the e-campus, and even those that you put on our hearts to give. We thank you for that. And Father, we don't take it lightly. We are honored that you have chosen us to, uh, uh, to move forward in the purpose that you have for us. So we ask that you would just bless the hands of those that have given and in their generosity, we ask that you to give them overflow. Give them, in your generosity, give them back more than they even could have imagined. Uh, and, I, and it's not just in finances, but Father, some need answers, some need answers yes. to prayer, some need direction, some need strategy, some need encouragement, some need healing, some need help. You pay them back however you want to. Amen. That's what the scripture says. That Lord, when we lend unto the poor, we you when we do unto the poor, you said it's lending unto you. And what you told me is you're going to pay us back with interest. So Father, I thank you now for the generosity of God's season. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now I'm going to get into the message, but I just, I got to give a couple of testimonies. First of all, y'all just been on fire this morning, hallelujah. Miss Tiffany started off up here. I said she just about kicked the devil and any little imps right on out the door. And then Jocelyn got up here. I said, Lord, y'all didn't, maybe y'all didn't see it. When she was doing her hand, it was like she had a sword in her hand. It was like I saw her cutting stuff. I said, oh, come on, Holy Ghost. You just cut up in here and here. Yeah. Amen. But the testimony I want to give you is, yes, I believe it was yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. Yesterday I, I was standing in my kitchen and I was standing in a particular specific spot. And it was like God transported me back to several years when I stood in the same spot. And he reminded me I went where I was at that time. I was in a place of hopelessness. I was in a place of despair. And it was in the midnight hour because I couldn't sleep. I got up and I was just in the kitchen. And I have these lights at the top of my cabinets. That's how I put it in the Christmas light. And I was just looking at the lights going, Lord, you know this is my favorite time of the year. But right now, I'm, it's not feeling like my favorite time of the year. It's feeling heavy. I'm feeling discouraged. Everything around me is falling apart. My life falling apart. My, my finances is falling apart. And I'm just like, Lord, how am I going to make it? And he, in that moment, he took me back to that very moment. Then he brought me back to where I was. And when I was crying out in that midnight hour, when I was standing, it was early in the morning. It must have been like 4 or 5 in the morning. I was standing in the same spot. He said, well, where are you now? He Amen. said, now you're in a place where I've healed everything that you yeah. thought was broken. I restored what you didn't think. He said, you didn't know where you were going. Financially, I didn't know how I was going to do it. My daughter would testify. She'd say, Ma, I used to, when she looked at me and doing my butt, she said, that's some calculus on a whole other level. How are you doing it? But God said, daughter, I brought you to a season. Where are you at now? He said, you just paid all stuff in full. And he said, because we paid one car note for my husband, and then this month we paid for it in full. And God said, I did that. Yeah. I did that. When your marriage and your life, you thought it was over, I healed it out of my son. See, I just want to tell somebody today, I just want to encourage you. You might be standing in that spot I was them years ago where it feel like it ain't no hope, where it feel real dark. It feel like nothing that you've been hoping for, waiting for is going to happen. But God said, if you stand and wait on him, he said that while you were standing in this hour, in your darkest hour, he said, I got a darn coming. I got a morning coming. I got a season and a time of better. He said, I got a time where things where they hurt now. He said, they ain't gonna hurt no more. That's for you, daughter. I didn't bring it. God said, that's for you. He said, I'm taking you to a time and a season where what is to break you, crush you, hurt you, ain't gonna do it no more. Amen. I'm gonna get in the mess. Let me give you another testimony. I, I, I told this to Pastor Orr, and, and uh, how the Lord had been growing me up. Ain't y'all so glad to God to grow you up? But, uh, so, you know, I, I get excited when I get a chance to do stuff for God. And so I got excited about being able to do this for the adoptive family. And so I put a post on our Facebook page, and in the post I just had said, we've adopted some families, and I want y'all to, if you can, help us to make this a great Christmas for whoever these families are. Some woman, don't know who she is, <laughs> came into our messenger in our church inbox. And she was like, well, can you do somebody out of town? And I said, no, not right now. This is specifically for here because the person has to show up to get it. 
Well, when did I see it? I could tell she was ready for a fight. Why did I see it? I was like, I'm not in charge of Facebook algorithms. I have no clue. I do have a clue. The enemy made sure you saw it. Um, because he was trying to send you as a discouragement. So she came and she, I told her, I, I, I was gracious. I explained that to her. Well, you know, and I can hear the tone. I, and I'm saying it because that's how I heard it. I can hear her tone was like, well, God want all Christians to help everybody except just the people in y'all church. And when you get that, uh, you'll get that. He'll show you that. Have a good day. I said, Oh, I do have that. I understand that. We help people in, in, in vast places and different areas, and, 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 and I'm fine with that, But uh, and I am going to have a good day. <laughs> and then I think she got mad because she didn't take me off, so then she told me I was a pagan. She didn't spell it right. She called me a pecan. She said, you a pecan. I don't know why I paid attention to that, but she said, you a pecan, and you a racist a-hole. So she spelled it all out. Then she blocked me, so I couldn't, couldn't respond back. But let me tell you why I'm blessed. It didn't trigger me. Amen. It didn't trigger me. See, that would have triggered me a few years ago. And then it discouraged me like, well, man, Lord, I'm trying to do. But see, I ain't got to be discouraged. You know why? Because my God has reminded me, daughter, I done brought you too far. Things that, that, things that, that the enemy had tried to use to attack and hurt you, uh-uh. And then he had told me, he said, and I heard this by way of the Holy Ghost. He said, she messed with the wrong one today. I don't know what she gonna have to deal with, but that ain't my business. All I know is God said she messed with the wrong one today. Amen. Jesus. So yeah, I just had to give y'all those two testimonies. Because y'all pastors excited when she be growing up. I don't know about nobody else, but I'm excited to be growing up. Because I'm going to be real transparent. I ain't in some places, but I'm going to some places. I'm not where I used to be, but I'm not, but I'm, and, and I know I'm not where I'm going to be, but I am on the journey and I'm going somewhere. Amen. 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 All right, so I pray that this series has been blessing y'all because it's been blessing me. Amen. Amen. And so one of the things that last week Jocelyn had shared about the names of God, and when I was seeking the Lord for this Sunday message, what it would be, I started off by hearing that song, Say the Name, by Martha Manuzzi. And I used to play them songs, that, that album to death. My kids, can, they got these little things, they can say one line of one, one of the songs, and they know the other one, know it finishes off for I said, well, I guess I played that a lot. <laughs> Pastor Johnson also said, it's, it, it, when it's our birthday celebration, we celebrate all month. In the natural, we be, we still, some of us start months in advance. We be talking about, and it is funny, because some of us get on Facebook, uh, here's my cash app. I be like, I don't even know you. But anyway, they put the cash app on it, like, here's my birthday, and they got their birthday pictures, all that good stuff. Well, if we can do that in the natural, how much more Amen. can we do that for God? Amen. And so to me, today's message is really like my thank you card. It's like my birthday card to Jesus, and I'm just letting y'all in on it. Amen? Amen? And so, as I was studying, I came across this quote, and it said, Billy Sunday once said in a sermon that there are 256 names given for Jesus in the Bible. Then he added, I suppose this was because he was definitely beyond all that any one name could express. Amen? I look at that and say, you know, we have to remind ourselves, we not, like Justin said this morning, we, we keep Jesus as a baby. He, he didn't start as a baby. Y'all know that, right? He was a spirit. He was with God. He was God. Amen. He took on that baby role for just a minute. He didn't never was going to stay a baby. He just took that because that was his interest way into humanity. Amen. Another author said that I thought was, was, was key, he said, this is significant, and I wrote these, these many names because the Bible part, I paid particular attention to names. Names speaks to one's character, mm -hmm. one's identity, mm -hmm. one's personality, and purpose in life. See, I didn't know that that was going to be, <laughs> so I love how God always do that. And so the many names of Jesus remind us of his greatness, his majesty, his deity, his ministry, his mission, and our relationship to him. And while I'm not going to address all 256 names, let's just take a look at some of those names of Jesus and what that means for us as it relates to God's provision for his children. What do the names speak regarding the character, identity, purpose, and personality, personality and purpose of Jesus? And then what do it mean for us regarding our character? Our identity, our personality, and our purpose. So let's get started. First, so I'm gonna first give you these meanings, just so we have that, and then I'm gonna go from there. So character is the mental and moral qualities 
uh, distinctive to an individual. So, for example, being fearful is not a characteristic of Jesus. Amen. Identity refers to our sense of who we are as individuals or as members of a specific group. For example, we identify ourselves as Christians. That's part of our identity, who we are as members of God's church. Their personality is this combination of characteristics and qualities that forms an individual's distinctive character. And then finally, purpose in life is living in a way that your purpose gives life Decisions, influence, behaviors, shapes your goals, offers a sense of direction, and creates meaning. But that purpose can be connected to not just who you are in church, but even who you, where you go in your job, in your vocation. Right, right. Who you are in relationships. Every part of who you are should have a tie back into God. You know, we just say my purpose in life, who I'm going to be in the church, and then we just all kind of anyway out here. Can I tell you, you know, your purpose is everywhere you go. Amen. Yes. I mean, for example, I tell people when I was selling, as I was selling my jewelry, I'm like, I'm selling the jewelry, but I'm still supposed to show up as God's ambassador. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I can't cuss you out. I can't be here, here doing un unethical things. Amen. Like even if I transition my business, I have agreed with paparazzi that I would never sell the jewelry for less than five dollars. That's part of their requirement. So people will stop selling. I ain't dissing nobody. They be selling their jewelry for a dollar and two dollars and three dollars. I'm gonna get mine away before I sell it because I made an agreement and I have to stay integral to my word. Yes. Amen. So I'm gonna give it away. Amen. I'll give it to you before I try to sell it to you for less than what I'm supposed to. Amen. All right, so let's say some names. First name is Emmanuel. <clears throat> Matthew 1, 23, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Right. The first character we see in the scripture is humility. There's a humbleness. See, Jesus took on flesh to bring acts, bring us to have access to God. He was willing to humble himself. Remember, this is God. He said, I'm going to put on this flesh that got limitations. He went from being limitless to, to limiting himself. Amen. That, takes, that calls for humility. Right, so he right. humbled himself to do this. And then he has, and then the identity of this is God with us. Yep. Yeah. Jesus represents yeah. to you and I that God is with us. I, I appreciate somebody saying you're never alone. You are never alone. I'm never alone. It may feel like it might even, that, that, that's the lie of the enemy to trick you. Because he'll tell you, oh, no, God don't care. Uh, you're going to go through this all by yourself. No, the devil is alive. Sometimes you don't see him because he's carrying you. Amen. Yeah. I love that thing, that footprint. In the, in the same thing, people used to say it all the time. They was like, I said, but well, sometimes what I saw is, I was only seeing the why you only saw the one set of footprints. It was one or two things. Either he was carrying you, or you were stepping right smack dab in Amen. the prints that he had already made. So you didn't have to try to figure out your own way. He had set the path for you to follow. And so the identity is God with us. Then the personality is that he made himself so, so vulnerable. There's vulnerability in that. To being born into human flesh and putting aside his rights. He was willing to become dependent upon others to fulfill his purpose, i.e. as a child. So he had to be, he had to be dependent on Mary. James yeah. died for feed him. Amen. Mm -hmm. So he put himself at, into a place where he had no need for nobody to be and having to need somebody. Yeah. And you know why he did that? So he could feel what we feel. Amen. Understand what we go through. Because there are times with us that we're going to need somebody to hold us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then the purpose in life based on this scripture to bring God down to us. Come on. I, I love that. It's a scripture to say, I, I don't remember where, but he talks about he saw you in your blood. It, it just land there. He reached down and picked you up. God says, I see you in what I'm willing to reach down to where you are. Sometimes, you know, we tell God, and we always tell people to come up, and yes, you keep trying to come up, but sometimes you can't come up far enough. Amen. We need God to reach down. The Lord is as far as I can get. But he said, but well, because you're at least reaching, I'm going to reach the way you are, and I'm going to pull you to myself. So then what does that mean? Because Emmanuel is God with us. We don't walk alone. Hello, somebody. Matthew 28, 20 said, teach these new disciples. Teach these new disciplines to uh, disciples, excuse me, to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. What's the character then for you and I? We must be humble. 
We got to be willing to learn this new way. See, I don't know about y'all, but I don't hear folks come into church and tell me, well, you know, I'm a this and I'm a that and I'm a the other. So when you going to use me? Because I'm not staying nowhere where I'm not used. What I heard this individual's well, well, let me know when you go so we can bless you. <laughs> because you're not going to tell me what you're supposed to do if God sent you here you, we, and I, we can come and have a dialogue together and we go find out what God wants you to do but I'm not putting nobody in no place just because you used to doing this and you used to doing that and the truth was I told this individual you so broken you need fixing before you do anything Amen. you're going to have to be willing to humble yourself to learn Jesus. All of us do. I, I, I may, I have to humble myself. Amen. I don't get to come. To, to, how would I look going? To God saying, "You know, God, I'm an apostle, <laughs> so I got this. Let me do this, that, and the other. He don't slap me down in the spirit. <laughs> so we got to be humble. Then what's our identity? We belong to God because God is always with us. Amen. There's this connection. There's no way God can always be with you if you're not belonging with Him. There's got to be a connection. There has to be some relationship. Because he's not with you, that means you're not with him. Because yeah. yeah. if he with you, if you with him, he's going to always be with you. So when people are like, well, God didn't do this and God didn't do that, well, maybe there's not God. Maybe yeah. you out of place. You're not in the right position. You need to get in position so then you can yeah. see the God with us. Thank you, Jesus. Then the personality is willing to be vulnerable. To depend on others. The example, Christ took on a baby's flesh. We have to be like children to learn to the mandates of God. We have to come with this childlike ability of saying, I don't know everything. Yeah. I'm willing to learn. Mm -hmm. That means you got to teach me how to walk. Maybe I've been, because so, some of us, we might have been walking many years. But maybe God said, I'm on your walk. you've been walking, but you know what? You've been walking with a limb. You just been walking, because you've been, you've been walking with a limb. And I'm going to put you in a place where I'm going to teach you how to now walk straight so there's balance in your life. Because since this thing got hurt in one season in your life, you keep limping. Yes. Wow. That thing got hurt, so you keep limping. And so what you're doing is you're putting all of strength on the wrong leg, and so you are imbalanced. Yes. So I got to straighten you up so there's no more limp. Yeah. You don't have my time. So you can walk right. He said, maybe I need to teach you as a child how to speak. You know, when a kid, we be talking, we be talking with the babies, right? God said, some of us are still that natural knack. We talking gibberish. And God said, I need to align your speech with my, with my word because you're talking too much garbage and it don't make no sense. Who Jesus. I, I'm, I'm going to look right up here because that's what I just heard. So I just had to say it. He said, I got to teach you how to speak. How do I mean that? Because God said, some of us are still, oh, I can't do this. This ain't going to happen. I'm always this. He said, that's garbage. That's the gibberish that you still speaking like a child. I need you to grow up. I'm going to yeah. need you to learn the language of heaven. The language of heaven don't say you can't do. The, that language of heaven says everything is at my disposal. And so because of that, I'm going to tap into it. I don't even got to feel it. Can I help y'all today? Stop worrying about what you feel like. Amen. Feelings are fickle. Amen. Yeah. They fickle. Yeah. There we go. They come, they like this, they toss. <laughs> you can feel nine different times, different ways in three minutes. Amen. You can feel happy, somebody can say something, I'm offended. Oh, wait. Mm. Yeah. Your whole face can do a whole thing because of your feelings. You got to learn how to let them feelings. I, I'm not saying ignore them, but you address them. Okay, I felt this kind of way. Why did I feel this way? Mm -hmm. Okay, but what does that have to do with truth? Nothing. Amen. Okay, we're going to leave you over there. Amen. Because truth is still the truth no matter what I feel like. And so God is saying we have to be willing to be vulnerable. And then purpose, purpose in life is not only are we learning to teach, to, to be taught, but then once we learn to be taught, we have to teach others and bring them into the presence of God. Amen. We got to bring them into the presence of God. So that was Emmanuel. Let's look at Lamb of God. John 1 and 29 says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So I, 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 I read something, I believe it was one of the commentaries, it says, where's the lamb? Isaac asked Abraham. John's pronouncement answers that question. Every slain lamb, lamb in the Old Testament offered for sacrifice is pointed to the one unique and un, un, unequal lamb of God. Amen? Amen. Because that, we, the Old Testament was just this foreshadowing. 
<clears throat> so it was not a perfect example. But Jesus became the perfect example. He became the only one for all nations, for all, all people, for every race. And guess what? We put our name in it for me. Amen. So what's the character we see in this? Holy and unblemished. John saw by way of the spirit the character of Jesus before he announced who he was. Before he identified him. He announced. He saw. He had to be able to see by the spirit Amen. who is this coming to be baptized. And God had to show him this is my son. He is the one that's holy and unblemished. This is the lamb that's coming that you have been seeking. This is the lamb that I've been promising. This is the lamb that's coming. And so guess what his identity is? He's the Lamb of God. He's the Lamb of God. Willing to be slain. That's the difference. See, when you look at the lambs that were slain before, let's just be real. They was a dumb animal with no choice. They just moved. They were just slain. They did not have thought to say, hey, object. <laughs> Jesus was a lamb of choice. He was not only chosen by God, but he chose to be the lamb. Amen. He made a distinctive choice to say, I will be the lamb that is slain for these people. These wayward, wicked, going around in circles, can't get it right, prideful people. You and I, no thank you. We'd have been like, ah, mm, them? No, sir. I don't even want you. Let's be real. We don't want that for ourselves. <laughs> And that too, I said. We fight that. Lord, I got, I got, we be manifesting. No, you got to that or that happen. And that Amen. happens. And so his personality of Jesus was to walk as fully God and fully human. Yeah. He did both. Yeah. He walked fully as God. Because the power and the access was always there. He just had it under control. Yeah. He never lost, because he wants us to understand this. Even though he took, took and moved to a lower level by stepping into humanity, he still always had access to his eternity. Amen. He always had access to it. He never, never lost it. He just chose to hold it in control. Because when they said stuff, he could have very well just said, be gone. And the old, they'd have been gone. But he didn't. He didn't. He could have took care of Judas right away. Because he knew Judas was Judas before anybody else knew Judas was Judas. He knew who Judas was. But he let Judas have an opportunity. Because I want y'all to understand. Because we look at Judas and say he was just wrong. He gave Judas an opportunity to make a better choice. Mm -hmm. Judas just did. Right. But because God already knew that Judas wasn't. He knew Judas was going to be the avenue. See, that's why we can't even try to, you know, we try to put that together. Our heads start hurting. Our brain be like, okay, wait a minute, hold on. He knew, but then he fled him, but then he knew. Yeah, because he already knows your choices before you do. But because he God, he still, you will nobody, there ain't going to be nobody that faces God that's going to say, well, you just made me do something. Nope, you had a choice. But because I know your heart was so wicked and you wouldn't choose. But I still gave you a choice. But you chose your own way. So what's the purpose in life? To take away the sins of the world. That one right there should just bless us beyond measure. Because it's not just that he take away the sins of the world. But now you and I, when we accept the gift of the Holy One, he says, I present you before my Father as holy and unblemished. Because you stand representing me. You ain't representing you no more. Right. I don't know about you, but that one bless me. Yeah. And so because he is the lamb, what happens is then we have been given the right to walk in the abundant life. Amen. 1 Peter 1, 18 to 21 says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. Right there, we can just stop. Hello. Amen. And it was, not, it was not paid with mere gold or silver which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But, but now in these last days he has been revealed for your sake. Through Christ you have come to trust in God and you have placed your faith 
and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. Great glory. Great glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I know somebody in it? Somebody just be happy with me on that one. Look, great glory. Because instantly what I heard is not only does he have great glory, but the great graciousness of God is bringing forth the great glory to you in our lives. We can walk in this great glory because of the great God that we have. So what's our character supposed to be? Holy and unblemished. We can now take on the attributes of God because of what Jesus did for each of us. And we receive this ability to walk holy with when we accept this gift. Can I say something right here? Holiness is more than, you know, I'm all covered. Because I've seen folks with all covered and they just is rotten on the inside. Just as bitter and nasty and mean and running folks. I mean running folks from the church. Or they prideful. Because see, they prideful in what they think is their holiness. And because they prideful in what they think is their holiness, they have put on what I call the Holy Ghost Junior uh, lenses. And now they think they have become Holy Ghost Spirit Junior to come tell you, you got big earrings on, you ain't really saved. Uh, 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 wait, no, 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 you got on lipstick. Oh, no, you ain't really saved. And I'm saved. And sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, but you full of pride and God ain't pleased in that. So holiness and unblemished means I'm going to work out my salvation with the Lord. I'm going to come before God to make sure that there's no blemishes in my life. That there's nothing on my heart. Because when he comes and does an x-ray of my heart, I want, him, I want the, the, the scare to show no blemishes. Yes. yes. And what's blemishes? Those things that we hold in our heart, that, that unforgiveness, that pride, that arrogance, that I'm better than you, that whatever. Yeah. That gossiping. All of that is the blemishes that blemishes our hearts. And God said, but we now have the ability to walk as holy and unblemished. Yeah. So that means I got to work that thing out daily. You got to work that thing out daily. Amen. 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 And then what's our identity then? We become sacrificial ones. Jesus became a sacrifice for our sins. Now we must sacrifice that life back to him. It is part of our identity in Christ. Our lives have been ransomed for God's glory. Remember I talk about that greater glory? If we, many of us can't understand. Who can I get that fan? I'm to burn up. Many of us can't get to the place of being glory carriers because we still stuck at... Um, we stuck at the right here. We just stuck at Jesus is my Savior, and I'm good. That's all. But he, I, I'm, he my security card. That's you know, I, you know, when I'm in trouble, I won't be able to call for help. But I ain't finna sacrifice none. Remember when I started off to my Adonai? You, he's Lord and Master. God said many of us have. We got to get to the place where He becomes Adonai. Well, we don't. We don't question what He tells us to do. We tell you to get up at three o'clock. You be like, okay, I'm just gonna get up. So I've been getting up at 3 o'clock. Because remember I told you, did the first, I, was, I told the Lord, well, Lord, if you want me to get up at 4, this was 4, I was like, you you know, you, you'll, you'll let me know. You'll wake me up. And so he woke me up with an alarm. We still don't know where the alarm came from. The next time I forgot to set the alarm, he turned the TV on and turned it up high. <laughs> and I know it was God because the remotes was above our head, so it wasn't nothing we touched. We could, no, we didn't reach up and touch it, nothing. It was God said, okay, I'm turning on the alarm and, I, and I'm turning on the TV. And he, he turned it on and the volume started going up. I looked at my husband and I was like, I just started laughing. I said, okay, Lord, I'm up. And then what did I do? I went downstairs and repented. I said, Father, forgive me. I've been saying four, but really I'm supposed to get up at three. But you've just been gracious to me. And I asked him something, and I, I want to share this with you. Sometimes, as sacrificial ones, we miss out on intel that God wants to give us because we're not willing to sacrifice. I remember saying to the Lord, okay, Lord, I hear these prophets talking about all this stuff in the earth and the world. I don't hear all of that. He said, you can't hear what you're not praying about. That's so, good. so when you start praying and saying, Lord, what's going on in the earth, he start giving you intel. Because he, hey, he gave me instructions. This is a little teacher right here. God gave me instructions. So for each day that I get up, I have certain things I'm supposed to pray for. So on Monday, I pray for y'all. I pray for y'all. And then on Tuesday, he had me pray. And he said pray for the, the, the area around the church. 
for the, the community around the church. He said, pray for the city we live in, pray for the nation, pray for churches. And so that's what I've been praying. And I started praying at three, and I looked up one, it was like four something. I was like, oh Lord, and I still ain't finished yet. But he began to give me intel. He began to talk to me about Chicago. He began to tell me, he said, part of the problem with Chicago is this, we, it goes back to even Al Capone. He said, there's this gangster spirit type of mentality here. So that's why you see things happening with these gangs and, and some of that stuff. Yeah, okay, so some of that stuff, he said, you know, we're putting all this blame on gangs. He said, but some of that stuff is happening in higher places. Hello. He said, and some of that stuff is happening. He also told me, he said, there are some resources that should be coming to some of these desolate communities. It's not getting there because of mishandlement. Mm -hmm. He said, but I'm getting ready to handle it. I, and I see it, I saw it like these communities were in these boxes locked up and they was dry and nothing was coming. And when God says, I'm going to start to break through, it's like I saw water come in and then you saw the trees begin to grow and things began to flourish. But God said, uh, you got to be a sacrificial one for you to hear stuff like that. And that ain't just for the apostle. That ain't just for the prophet. That's not just for the intercessor. Everybody raise their hand is in this room. For you online, raise your hand too. That means it's for you too. Any and all of us need to become those that pray because God called us to be sacrificial ones. Then our personality is new attitude. <laughs> we chose freedom. We now walk in the newness of life because we are new creatures. But I love that. It was like he said, you got a new attitude. So some of us, he said, you got to get rid of that salty attitude. You got to get rid of this why me, my, why me all at time attitude. We got to get rid of this complaining attitude. We got to get this pull me attitude. He said, some of us got to get rid of this martyrdom. We just like, oh, if I had to, oh, I would use this. He said, some of us walking around like, oh, my. Oh, Lord, you see how much, you see how much I give. And look at how they doing me. The Lord's like, um, did they do more to you than they did to my son? If not, then um, get over yourself. Get over yourself. He said that's an expected, that's a reasonable portion, that's a reasonable expectation that I have of you to be willing to walk through whatever you got to walk through. And so our purpose in life is to share the truth about the one who takes away the sins of the world. God said, and I'm going to just say this, and that's not directed at nobody, but just what the Lord said. He said, our mouths are closed too much. He said, we're supposed to be talking and sharing. And we walk up past people going, he said, we walk past people and in our minds we go, well, do they, maybe, maybe they're already Christians, Christians, or maybe they already know, or maybe they're going to be this, and I don't want to fight, and blah, blah, blah. He said, did I ask you all that? He said, walk past somebody, even if you're not, even if you're gonna say, I just want to let you know the Lord love you today. Keep going. There ain't no fight. There ain't no fight because you told them the truth. Yeah. The love, the Lord love you. They ask you now, they get started, and you can you can have a conversation, but you can say, the love, the Lord love you. I've had somebody say, you know, I'm praying for you that now pray for me. I said, okay, I won't pray for you in your face. <laughs> but I'm gonna pray for you. <laughs> but guess what? That's okay. You just keep it moving. But God said we, we keep our mouths closed too long, too much. So, all right, next part is Alpha and Omega. Revelation 22, 13 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And can I say, I'm, that means if I'm the first and the last, I mean he's all in between two. Yeah. So his character is powerful, is this a powerfulness and full of authority. Jesus, our beginning, our end, and he has the final answer. He is the final answer. God, and you know what, what, what just struck me? If he's the final answer, the problem is some of us wait to the end to come ask him. He said, I'm the beginning and the end. He said, I'm the first and the last. Why y'all stop making me last? Stop putting me in the last place. You done try to figure it out. You done try to do it yourself. You done try to do all this stuff. But how about you let me be the one that show you. So then since you come to me in the beginning, I can walk you all the way through to the right kind of end. Amen? Amen. Our identity then, his identity is manifested power of God in flesh. So you know what I think is significant for me? The fact that God, Jesus became flesh, but yet he still showed all his power in flesh. You know what that means? 
He showed us that our flesh is able to walk in the power of God when we allow his spirit access. So people be like, well, you know, I don't want to do this. So people be afraid to pray certain things because this this thing of if I pray, the demon's going to come and I'm going to be attacked. But the greatest he that's in you that he that's in the world. Amen. We got to change some of our thinking. Because yeah. we be thinking, well, I ain't, because I've heard people say, well, I ain't going to pray that because I don't want the warfare to start. And I'm thinking to myself, but the warfare already started. Because you just let the enemy convince you not to pray. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the warfare started, it was just on stealth mode. You just, you missed it. You better pray. Because guess what? That's how he's going to keep you in this stuck place. Because every time you get ready to pray for something to break, oh, no, the enemy coming. He's like, good, I got her stuck. I got him stuck. I ain't being stuck. You're going to come, you're going to come. But I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Because I believe what God said. And so his personality, did I say personality? Okay. No. Okay, personality, he is glory, power, authority, and the writer of our story. Come on, somebody. He writing your story. And you know what I used to tell people all the time, this is funny. Like, all y'all got paper, right? You got a blank sheet of paper. If you was to take one of a blank sheet of paper and scribble all over it, Many of us look at that because we done scribbled all over our paper and we go, okay, this is messed up. God says, tear that paper up, throw it away, give me a blank sheet and let me start writing. And not only do he get to write my story, you don't get to write my story. I ain't asked you to edit my story. I ain't asked you to put no addendums on my story. And I tell people, if you don't want to be a part of my story, you better leave me alone. Because <laughs> God will do something with you. When you're trying to mess up the story, he's trying to do and so the purpose in life was to restore humanity to the right place with God to guide our lives. Amen. So because of all this, you and I, we have been given a destiny. Ephesians 1.11 says, furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance and he makes everything work out according to his plan. I love that. He, he chose you in advance. So you know, you and I were chosen. God decision to choose this 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 weird world for His purpose was decided even before Adam sinned. He knew Adam was gonna sin. That's just the part that blew my mind. God is in the future. He in the past. He everywhere. He in your future. Don't you know God is already where you get ready to go? And when you get to that, that was the moment that I had in my kitchen the other day. God was showing me, Jewel, when you was in that moment in the same spot thinking that things were falling apart, I was already working it out. I was just waiting for you to trust me because we was going to get to this day. You were going to be standing in the same spot and I was going to reveal to you that you had made it over. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we have been given this destiny. So um, our character then is to walk in power and authority. Because we are united with Christ. We have been given access to what Christ has. You know I keep telling you about that black car. You know, like if you have a black credit card, one of the credit cards don't have no name on it, just it's black, it's just beautiful. Because it's just an elite type of thing. Well, see, it's only a few people that have some black credit cards. But can I tell you, you got a black spiritual card. Everybody can have one. They got it. They belong to the Lord Jesus Savior and to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So you got a black card. But God said many of us don't, get, don't use it at all. Many of us have, we have, and think about it, it's unlimited. Unlimited. Ain't no limit on it. And you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> so when the bill comes through, when the invoice comes through, Jesus says, pay it in full. When you say, when we look at if you was to get an invoice, well, she prayed for healing, she asked for deliverance, she prayed for her child to be saved, she prayed for this, she prayed for that, she prayed, she prayed, she prayed, she asked, she asked, she asked, she asked, she asked, she asked. She asked. The bill is due. In full by the blood of Jesus Christ. And God said, too many of us ain't doing that. And we over here going, well, I'm going to just figure this out. I need to do better. I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, you better, you better tap into the source and the access that you got. And then because a part of that is your identity is your heir. We are heirs and have access to provision. We got to stop acting like we paupers. We have to stop acting like we don't have nothing. Yeah. Because you have full access. Full. Full mean full. <laughs> full mean all. Full mean unlimited. Full mean 24-7. Wow. There is no blackout date. <laughs> you have full access at all times to all provisions. Come on, somebody. Amen. And then I 
personality, God says we need to be glory carriers. We utilize the authority and power of God to live according to God's plan. So we have to then, it's not just, if we, we don't just talk to talk, we not got to walk the walk. Because I can stand there and tell you, oh, you know, I'm this, that, and the other. But no, no, I got to walk that thing out. So when I come in the room, you got to know something is different about me. Remember when I had the example when I had my, my disco ball shirt on? I told you, I was like, y'all can see me from across the room. God said, that's how my glory is supposed to be. People come in, they may not even know what it is, but they see it. Yeah. I remember I did a conference, I mean, I was at a, an event once. I think it was a selling event. I think I was selling Avon at the time. We went to this kind of fair. <laughs> And this lady came up to me. And I remember that prayer that week. I was like, Lord, I want people to see you when they see me. Wow. That's really just, so whatever that means that you got to do in my life, please do it. And this woman walked up to me. She said, can I ask you a question? She said, can I say something? It's going to sound strange. I said, sure. She said, something different about you. I said, oh, yeah. She said, yeah, I mean, I know you're selling the jewelry. I mean, uh, the, the Avon. She said, but there's just like this light, just, just light all over you and... It's like, wow, it just drew me to you. And I was like, well, praise the Lord. And I said, hallelujah. And, I, and it hit me. That's you, God. That's you answering prayer. See, that's the glory. I didn't realize at the time that was that, that, that I was just tapping in to understand the glory. But people are, people will acknowledge the glory. At the same time, don't you know, that's why sometimes you get fights. Because the enemy don't like you. So when, the, when that person gets close to the glory, it brass things are manifesting around you. And you have to be okay. It's like, it's the glory. I'm not finna, I'm not, you're not going to pull me out of my spot though. See, the enemy's saying and trying to pull me out of being a glory carrier. So now I'm on your level. I'm no, yeah. I'm staying right chill. I'm going to pray for you because we're not getting ready to do that. Yeah. I remember one time when we was doing a, an outdoor event and this lady was about to have a fit because one of the, we was giving away backpacks and she wanted one backpack and was, it was gone and we only had one left and she was about to manifest. And I just remember touching her, and I don't know if it was Tiffany one day, like she almost failed. I was like, yeah. I was like, you just have a bad day. <laughs> Gave her a hug, and she she was like, she looked at me like she didn't know what happened. I was like, I was like, we just gonna calm that spirit down. But guess what? That's not me. That's not me. I want to be clear. That's not me. I don't take no I take no credit for none of it. That's God's glory. I'm just glad that God uses me as a vessel. And that's part of who we should be. That's Amen. part of our personality. And then it works with our purpose in life is to receive and utilize the inheritance we have from God. God has given us an inheritance. So we got to utilize it. We got to be good stewards of it. We don't want to be like some people fighting over inheritance. They get it and they squander it. Yeah. We're not squandering our inheritance. Yeah. We're going to utilize it. And as you utilize your, your spiritual inheritance, can I tell you, it increases. Just like if you got some physical money and invested it somewhere, it's going to grow. God said when you steward the inheritance that he gives you, it will grow. It leaves legacy. It leaves uh, uh, something for the next generation to be able to stand on. Now we're talking about king of the Jews. That's one of his names. Matthew 27, 37 says, A sign was fastened above Jesus' head, announcing the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. The character that we see in this was suffering servant. He willingly took the taunts and ridicules to walk in his rightful heir as king. Though they thought it was a taunt, it was truth. And in his identity, though they made this a taunt, his identity is king of kings. Amen. He was, the, as well as the king of the Jews, he is the, the authority as king over everything. Yes. His personality was he was obedient to the suffering that was necessary to fulfill his purpose. And therefore, um, his, his uh, purpose in life is he lived as Jesus the Christ. I want y'all to hear this. He lived as Jesus the Christ. He died as king of the Jews, but he rose as savior of the world. Amen. Can, I, can I say that one more time? You know what I mean? See, his purpose in life, he lived as Jesus the Christ. That's what he was sent to do. They thought they was mocking him, so he died as king of the Jews, but then he rose as the savior of the world. Amen. See, Jesus said, you can't keep me from walking in my purpose in life. And because of that, we are royalty. Yes. We are royalty. First Peter 2 and 9 said, but you are not like that. 
for you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So your character, my character, is suffering servant. Suffering servant. Y'all yeah. like, we don't know, I don't want to lose nobody right there. <laughs> you like suffering who? You just told me I was royalty. How? That don't make sense. That's an oxymoron. How can I be royalty and suffer at the same time? Because Jesus did it. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to stop saying, do what Jesus did. Be like Jesus. What would Jesus do? He showed you what he did. Now we got to follow. Amen. So suffer and serve. Because we are called out of darkness. We must willingly take every assignment he gives us. Even if it calls for us to go through some difficult places. Because I've heard too many people say, well, God don't want me to suffer. He don't want me to be upset. He don't want me to be this. He don't want me to be that. He don't want me to be inconvenienced. I be like, I be just listening because I be like, show me what scripture because then I need to take that to him and say, Lord, maybe I misunderstand it because I've been here totally different. I ain't heard nowhere where he said, no, I want everything to be smooth sailing for you. <laughs> that ain't what I saw. So I'm like, where y'all saw that at? Because what scripture I've been missing? I've been reading the Bible wrong or something. Somebody help me out here because I don't see that. So we got to be willing to go through those difficult times. But this is the key. You're not going through them by yourself, nor are you going through them on your own. Or, or on your own power. Yeah. Identity. We are holy priesthood. We are called to walk in a kingdom mindset as a kingdom citizen. Only way you and I can walk, walk as holy priesthood of God is we got to know the mandate. Like, if you join some group or something, they have rules and regulations. You got to know the rules and regulations. You got to read the bylaws, or so to speak. You got to know what is expected of you in that membership so that you're not misusing the membership. Uh, it's too many folks calling themselves holy priesthood and don't read their manual, the Bible. How you know what you're doing if it's aligning with what it's supposed to if you're not reading the word? Now, we talk about that spirit and truth. Can I give y'all a little thing that the Lord talked to me about? He said, this is the problem. We got two camps. We got people that are just spiritual. Oh, I'm just trusting in the spirit. I'm going based on what I feel. The spirit, the spirit, the spirit. And, but they ain't got no truth behind it. What's the truth? The word. So they're not putting the word with it. They're just going on their feelings. So they're looking for this hype. They're looking for churches that make them feel good. They're looking for churches that just rile them up. And they get excited about all of the rallyingness. That's a word. They get excited about all of the hoopla, but then they don't, they kind of ignore truth. Then you got the group that's like, because they tired of all of the, some of the goofiness with the spiritual camp, they go, we just, we ain't doing that. We just truth. But they become legalistic. Because then it's like, this is the word, and if it's not in this exact scripture, with some stuff, you got to let the spirit teach you how to apply. So then you got that camp. That's why he said spirit and the truth. Amen. You need to be able to walk by the spirit, and the way you walk by the spirit is applying what the Bible says. So then you know if what you're walking in is truthful. You ain't walking around looking for angel dust and, and glitter to fall because you understanding that, okay, not saying God can't do that, that ain't what I'm saying. But I ain't, that ain't what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for angel wings. <laughs> Folks be like, well, I got an angel wing. I'm... Okay. I'll be like, but in, where does scripture say we need angel wings? Or oh, angel feathers, rather. Where, where in the scripture do we say an angel feather is a representation that Christ is with us? So, you know, we get goofy. We get real spiritual and stuff, but we never apply word. Let's apply the truth. So we make sure that some of this stuff, because can I tell you, we're in a time, and God said we're moving into a season where we're going to see more trickery, Amen. spiritual trickery, that will make you think it's God. But if you don't got no application of word, wow. you and, and not going into and discerning, you'll be like, oh, I'm running over there, and you'll be running right into hell. Okay, I said what I said. All right, moving on. Uh -huh, where to leave off with? Personality. Identity. Okay. Personality. Okay, thank you. So living righteously, loving, seeking the will of God to bring him glory. This living righteousness mean that it's not um, a put it on, it's not a like a coat you can put on and take off. So I don't just put it on on Sunday. This ain't just my church clothes. I'll put it in on Sunday, but I ain't, I'm ratchet every other day. I'm mean and nasty. You go to work and people be like, well, did she come <laughs> Did she leave yet? No, that ain't loving. 
That's not seeking the will of, and the glory of God. And so part of your purpose then is life is to walk as a royal person, walk royal people no longer in dark, but walking and displaying his light. We were born sinners, but we have to die to the self and ra be raised as sons and daughters of the Most High. And some of that, can I tell you, that's a daily thing. Amen. Some of that's daily, because you might do well today, that don't mean tomorrow you ain't going to jack it up. Because somebody might come along, say something, do something, and next thing you know, you triggered and your eyes twitching. You know? So <laughs> you be like, oh, okay, Lord, thank you. Thank you for showing me that I am still human and I still need some help. Amen. Because I really want to lean back and come way across and, and lay them out, but it wasn't going to be laid out in the spirit. It was, so, yeah, anywho. So he is wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Is this blessing, y'all? Yeah. yeah. Isaiah 9 and 6 says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. So the character that we see, the characteristic we see in Jesus is trustworthiness. Amen. He is trustworthy. He's the son. And as the son of God, Jesus was given all of the father's rights to rule. That's what it's telling us. He has rights to do everything. He got the right to do whatever he want to do. So why do we keep trying to discount him and say he ain't the Lord, he ain't in charge? I don't know. But that's what my Bible says. His identity then, I love that he said he's a government regulator. Right. God's kingdom government is dependent on and resting on the shoulder of Jesus. He's, he, he regulates government. He regulates rulership. Guess what? So even in the natural, we see all of this crazy stuff happening in government. God said to me a long time ago, he said, I just allowed them in and they don't do it my way. I set them down. He can set up kings and take them down. Ain't that what the scriptures say? Yeah. So even though people are in governmental positions and places, they ain't above the, ain't above the law. And I'm talking about the law and the will of God. Amen. Then the personality of Jesus, we see in this scripture, is multifaceted. He always gave more. Therefore, he asked for more from us. He is wonderful, great, brilliant, supreme. He's that counselor. Think about a lawyer, a doctor, helping any situation that requires help. He shows up as that. He's the mighty God. He's strong and powerful. Everlasting Father, his reign has no end, no beginning. It always will be, always has been. There's no, there's no interruption in it. There's no pause in it. If it started, it's going to continue. That's who he is. There's no pause in God. Can I hear? Can somebody we, we just we join? There's no pause. You and I may put a pause. There's no pause in God. He is everlasting, always going, never tired. Amen. Prince of Peace, the one who rules over the spirit of peace. That's what God said. He rules over the spirit of peace. When you and I call for peace because he's the Prince of Peace, he rules over the spirit of peace. He sends the spirit of peace out to you because he's the one that guides and leads and requires us to, to, to and he requires him to do his bidding. Amen. So purpose in life is to release the access to kingdom provision. Because of that, he is everything we need. Colossians 3.11 said, In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us. Come on, somebody. The character you and I should have is we are spiritually renewed. We all walk in a new life. We're not the same. So stop thinking the same. Can you think about it? You go get a, a new car, that new car ain't gonna run and act like the old car you had. Cause it's a whole new car, whole new engine, whole new everything. God said you are new, so stop trying to act like the old you. Stop trying to pull up the old you and run it like the old you. The new you, you a new model. Yeah. You a brand new model, you been an upgrade. Huh? You been an upgrade. God said you a new model, you a new model. You don't think the same, you don't, you don't have that. All things have changed. So we gotta stop being the same. So your identity, my identity is we're a child, we're a child of God. Right, right. And because of that, what is our personality? Can I tell you we multifaceted as well? Because Jesus gave us the more. We too then must walk in more. Uh, no longer are we to hold to the past. Those things don't matter. We gotta walk in this newness of God, and it's because He's a multifaceted God that we serve. You and I gotta put on the multifacetedness of God and walk that thing out. Walk in the gifts, walk in the spirit, walk in the power, walk in the anointing. 
anointed. Let him have his way. And guess what? It ain't about you no way. Because you can't do it. It's not you. So don't get puffed up. Because too many people get puffed up like, ooh, look at what I'm doing. I'm doing better than Pastor A over there. I'm doing Pastor better than Pastor B over there. You better shut up because Pastor C is doing what the Lord said. Pastor C will pass all y'all up. Because y'all got the wrong mindset. I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to compete with nobody. I got to compete with Jewel every day. I wake up, I got to compete with what Jewel want to do. Jewel want to go stand, I, especially in the 3 o'clock call, I'm like, Lord, can I go back to sleep? That's what my, that's what the, Denise wants to do. But I have to say, no, get up. Get fully up. Don't try to hang for no minute. Get up. And that's how I have to talk to myself. I get up, and I get up and literally walk downstairs. I go to my basement. I call my lower upper room. And I to put on my music. I sit there. Sometimes it might take me five minutes. I'm like, Lord, I just, I'm just praying for me to wake up right now. And, and just have your way for me to completely wake up. Because I don't want to miss nothing that's about to happen in this time with us. Because, see, I was going from four to maybe five or six. And now I'm a three. You think it's short? No, it's going from three to four or five or six. So he just, he said, good, give me an extra hour. I can tell you some more. You just gave me more time. Mm -hmm. And so our purpose is like to live free from all that held us in bondage in our own way. The bread of life, the bread of life, the bread of life, the bread of life. John 6.35 says, Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. What's the character of Jesus? He is provider. He satisfies we, he, excuse me, he sacrificed himself for the needs of others. So he is your provider. Amen. What's his identity? He said, I'm the bread of life. He feeds us and provides for us. So when you're hungry, he's going to feed you. If you're hungry for righteousness, if you're hungry for answers, if you're hungry for peace, whatever you're hungry for, God said, I'm going to feed for you. And he said, not only am I going to feed you, but if you're thirsty. Uh, you know, if your body go too long without water, you can become delirious. You can actually die. Your body will shut down. God said, you go too long without my spirit. You can become delirious and you can yeah. die. He said, so I'm going to water you by my spirit so you don't get thirsty and die. I'm going to make sure you have life and that you live it abundantly. Amen. Your personality, his personality is compassionate. Jesus cares for the needs of humanity. Therefore, he gives us what we need. We no longer have to hunger or thirst. He, guess what? You know you always got a table and a place at the table. He says, set on up because I feed you in the presence of your enemy. So even when your enemies think they can stop you, I got a table for you. Come slide right on up to the table. And it's got an bounty for you to eat. It's a smorgasbord, if you will. Oh, you feel like you need, you want a little Mexican food today? He said, I got you over here. He said, you want a little soul food? I got you over here. Guess what? That's what the word do. You need a little something here, he's going to send you to this scripture. You need that particular thing, he's going to send you that. He got a smart boy for you to eat from. Ha. So therefore, come on somebody. Whoo, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Purpose, thank you. To give humanity access to what keeps us fed and refreshed. Therefore, because of that, he feeds us. He feeds us. Philippians 4.19 says, And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. The character is that he, we are sustained. God gives us Jesus to ensure we have all that we need. You and I are sustained. Can you say that? I am sustained. I am sustained. And then because you are sustained, guess what? You ain't got to worry about nothing because now your identity is you a kingdom citizen. Right, right. As a child of God, our needs are supplied through Jesus. So when we seek, he said we're going to find. And we are going to be nourished and we're gonna, our thirst is going to be refreshed and we're going to be refined. If you drink a certain type of water, other waters don't taste good too. You know how some of y'all are funny about y'all water, right? You be like, oh no, I got to drink this water. And if you drink a certain kind of water, when you get somebody bring you something, you that don't taste right. God said, well, when you drink what Christ offers to you, you don't want to, you shouldn't want to drink nothing else because it don't taste right. It no longer will be able to quench your thirst. He said, so why we be going back into sinful stuff when you done drunk from the well? You don't want to go drink no, because you go from drinking from the well like going to drink a sewer water. Mm -hmm. His personality, the personality is givers. Because we have had all we need and all our needs met in Christ, he said we need to learn to be willing to give to others. Amen. So their needs can be met. 
And then our purpose in life is to walk in kingdom provision as we release kingdom blessings. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many more I got? How many more I got? I think I got two more. The Redeemer, Isaiah 59 and 20. The Redeemer will come to, Jer to Jerusalem to buy back those in Israel who have turned from their sins, says the Lord. What's the character? He's a rescuer. Right. Jesus goes seeking. Because let me say, he said, I'm going back. He goes seeking after those that are lost. Don't you know when you was lost, you didn't even have enough sense to come in. He was wooing you to himself. By his spirit, he was wooing you. That's why when people would say stuff to you, things was happening, and you couldn't figure out why you couldn't shake it, you weren't that smart. You didn't, you didn't just decide to get saved. God wooed you to himself. Amen. And so the character, he is a rescuer. Jesus goes, I said, seeking after those. And then the identity, identity is, as the rescuer, he's a redeemer. Right. He made a way for all of us to have right relationship with God. At the same time, he is active in pursuing and drawing us to himself. So even as you walk in a right relationship, can I tell you, he's still pursuing you. Amen. His pursuit of you never ends. Amen. What's the personality? He cares for the loss. He cared enough that he moved and he did something. He came and got his people. I was saying, he's not going back to him. He came and got his people. So purpose in life was to draw back. It says buy back. To God, all those who desire to return. God won't toss you aside. He wants you back. And the buyback was Jesus' life. He purchased you. Amen. He didn't just come snatch you illegally. He legally purchased your life. Because right, right. it was a price you and I couldn't pay. But he was willing to pay the price. Because of that, we can live the redeemed life. Galatians 2 and 20 English Standard Version says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So my character, your character, is be, to be rescued. Yes. We live like we rescue. Meaning, no longer are we walking like orphans. No longer are we walking like we rejected. Because we've been rescued because of Jesus sacrifice. We've been brought out of destruction and we now walk as those that have been rescued. Hallelujah. My identity, your identity is we the redeemed. And as the redeemed we need to continue to say so. Mm -hmm. So that others will come to Christ and, and walk in the life that he has for them. Amen. Your personality, my personality we need to be compassionate. We got to care for the lost. Because he first loved us, we now must walk as examples for others so they can see what it means to live with Christ. Yeah. Guess what? Many people ain't gonna come to Christ if the Christians don't look like they enjoy being Christians. Yeah. I don't wanna join no club where everybody is miserable. Yeah. I'm looking at the club and I'm like, they all angry and mad and, mm, no thank you, I'll pass on that one. I'm gonna find me another club. So God said, we got to stop making it look like it's so hard to be a Christian. I'm not saying you don't go through hardships, but you can still go through like a good soldier. Amen? Amen. So our purpose in life is to spray, display the Christ who lives in us. And then, the living stone. 1 Peter 2 and 4 says, you are coming to Christ who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. His character is he was chosen. Yes. Jesus was chosen by God for the assignment of building his house. So for those that say Jesus don't have nothing to do with the house, eh, wrong answer. He is the, not only the cornerstone, the foundation, he is the house. The identity is he's the living cornerstone of God's temple. He is that, that marker, if you will, that says that this is God's house. Can I say something real quick? As a church, church, if we don't have Christ as the cornerstone, we don't have the marker that then shows that we belong to God. And I'm talking about from a spiritual perspective. If we're not building as Jesus and Jesus as the foundation and Jesus' salvation as why we have come together as a people, that becomes the marker. Think about a building where if you wrote this, this has been established or whatever, you know, you see buildings where they say this has been established. That's kind of a cornerstone that they're trying to bring something to your attention. Either who had built it, when it was built, when it was founded. Jesus becomes the, the engraving, if you will, on our building. Spiritually speaking. So guess what? 
And when we come, we should be able to know and spiritually know this is a building built on Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why I own them folks they have in they, in they um, churches and sometimes, and I know what they mean, but they be like, this building was founded on so-and-so. I ain't going to your church because it was founded on so-and-so. I need a building founded on Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean, but just take your name off the building. <laughs> take, it, take it off. Because you didn't, you didn't found this. This was founded on the blood of Jesus Christ. And so he is the care, the character of Jesus is he has said he was chosen. His identity, living cornerstone, his personality is a builder. Right. He builds the people of God. And as the cornerstone, Jesus is the foundation by which the people of God can become part of the blueprint of heaven's agenda. So he's a builder. And his purpose is like to draw the rejected to God for greater purpose. I love that because it says man rejected it, but God did. Can I tell you, when you become part of God's family, it don't matter who rejected you because God said, I've chosen you. Amen. That's good. And that's why we then become, our purpose then, and we become, we are living stones. Amen. First Peter 2, 5 and 7 says, and you are living stones that God is building upon his spiritual temple. What's more, you are his holy priest. Through the meditation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifice that please God. As the scripture says, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honor, and anyone who trusts in him will never get be disgraced. Yes, you were you who trust him recognize the honor of God has given him. But for those who reject him, the stone that the builder rejected has become the cornerstone. So our character is we're chosen. Amen. We are the living stones. God is building into spiritual temples. People who house his glory. Remember I told you that? We house his glory. Our identity is we are living stones. That's interesting. God uses each of us as a building block to his plans and purpose. And together we come to build out our complex thing. This thing we build in is complex. And then it, it help, helps to house our work in unity. So I can't say I'm the best brick <laughs> my brick is better than your brick yeah. I don't care how many gifts and talent have. we all are bricks Amen. and we come together we yeah. build on together and we build up what God has called for us because Amen. it's all his temple it's Amen. all his house Amen. and so then our personality is the builder of others as God holy priest we stand in position to provide for the needs of those who came seeking from the Lord we offer them help him he does the work inside but we work in partnership with the Lord. Amen. So I don't own nobody. You don't own nobody. All we do, which is a good thing we do, we partner with people, but God does the work. And so finally, the purpose in life is to be the light to draw the rejected to Jesus. There's so much more we have because of the name of Jesus. Let us begin to walk in the fullness of the provisions we have. Let us allow it to, to, to change our character. Let it confirm and affirm us in our identity. Let, let it change our personality to align with what God says that we are. Let it help us to walk in a purpose that who he has called us to be. Let it encourage us to be better and do better. Let us encourage us to know that whoever God called us to be, that it is okay that I don't look like you, you don't look like me, you don't sound like me, you don't act like me. I'm not asking for a mini me. I'm asking for the best you. As your pastor, I don't want you to be a mini me. I don't want you to have to say, okay, I got to, I got to bounce around because Pastor Jewel bounce around. No, if you need to stand straight and you may be more of an oratory, you may not get loud and scream and shout. As my kids used to say, mommy is yelling at God again. You know, might not be a loud person. You might, you know, be guess what be you and be the best you Amen. because that's who God called he didn't call you to be a poor imitation to nobody else because guess what as soon as I try to be you I'm going to mess it up sometimes I mess up being me yeah. so I pray that this message blessed you Amen. Amen. and I'm just Asking the Lord to help us realize when we talk about we got this more in God, He gives us more. There's more that you have access to. There's more that I have access to that we not always tapping into. And this scripture that you see on the, that John 10 10, that's why we that, that's our foundational scripture, even here at the church about abundant life. 
See, the thief comes to try to trick you out of who you are. That you and I are not good enough. But the truth is, we have more and we have it abundantly. Amen. We're walking in the generosity of God. Yeah. We're walking in who he has called for us to be. So, Father, I thank you. You can play my song again, just at a little low, and, and I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you today. We thank you today. That as your people, Father, we, we, we are learning the power and the, the, the magnitude of your name. The character of you. The personality and the authority and, and the purpose that is all even encompassed in your name. And we're asking you today, Father, to help us to walk out more fully who we are because of the name of Jesus Christ. Because of who he is as Lamb of God. Because who he is is Jehovah. Because of who he is, Father, for all the names. Father, we thank you because with each one, there's a reminder of just how much more we have in you. So as your people today, God, we come to you and we bow at your feet and say, Father, fill us afresh and anew. We're thirsting after you. We're hungry for you. And God, you promised that you're going to fill us. So we ask that you would have your way in us today. Wherever there's discouragement in your people, Father, we stand asking you to fill us in those areas. Where there's healing needed, heal. Where there's answer needed, give answer. Whatever the need, God, we ask you to do it. And we trust because we know that you all of our needs are filled according to your riches in Christ Jesus. We also know that even while we are asking you, you've already got a plan for us. You already have an answer for us. So we thank you for the answer. We thank you today, God, for the strategies that you've given to us. God, we come now with the power and the authority that's been given to Jesus, us through Jesus Christ. Father, and we command that the enemy is under our feet. Our God, and you said when he's under our feet, he's humiliated. I thank you, Lord God, that you are humiliating the devil in this season. You are humiliating the enemy of our soul. God, we thank you today that we walk in authority and we walk in power and because we walk in authority and because we walk in power God we thank you for the shift in the atmosphere we thank you Lord God we're going to pray for conditions areas situations and we believe by faith that you're going to do a thing we thank you Lord God that we're going to see some changes we're going to see some uh, miraculous moves of God in this season and this time and we say thank you I thank you Lord God even for the generosity of God that's going to move us to our next as a church I thank you you, Lord God, even right now, all of the provisions we need are waiting on us. I thank you, Lord God, the new place is waiting on us, God. I thank you that the, the things that we need are waiting on us. And God, I thank you that you're going to align us so that we walk into it. God, I thank you that you're aligning your people that are going to walk into the blessings that you have for them. You're going to walk into Thank you, they're going to walk through the door. Those open doors, they're going to walk through them. God, I thank you that nothing can keep a door from there. Father, the Lord, you show me, even if it's not a door, God said, there could be a blank wall. He said, don't you know I can cut a door where there wasn't no door? He said, I can cut an opening into a space where it didn't seem like there was an opening. If I tell you to stand there, you stand there, and even if it don't look like it's an opening, you stand there and by faith say, I command my opening to come. I command my opening to come. Come. I decree that my door is opening. I decree my door is opening in my favor. I decree that the opening for what I need is coming. I decree that, Lord God, that even if I don't see the knob, you can still open it. Ha. God, I thank you now for open doors in this season. Us walking into the fullness of what you have for us in every area of our lives. So, God, we say thank you. We give you honor today. We are so grateful to know that you were born for a purpose. Oh, God, we thank you today, Jesus, to know that you have given us more than we could ask for. I thank you today, God, to know that by the blood of Jesus Christ, all that I need, I have access to. All your children have need to be have access to. God, I thank you there's healing in the blood. There's deliverance in the blood. There's freedom in the blood. Ah, the blood, the blood, the blood. Ah, God, I thank you. Remind to me, I don't need buckets. One drop. One drop is sufficient. One drop is sufficient. Because the moment they pierced your hand and the first drop fell, ah, it began the manifestation of everything that the blood would give. So, Father, I thank you for the first drop. I thank you for the first drop. I thank you for the one drop of blood that was sufficient to save our soul. The one drop that was sufficient to provide for us. God, we give you praise.
praise. We say thank you. 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 We say thank you, God. We give you praise. We give you praise. Oh God, we say the name. We say the name. All the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. Oh God, we say the whether you call him Yeshua. Ha. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We thank you, Holy One. Ha. We thank you, Holy One. Ha. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you for your spirit. The spirit that is at the command of Jesus. Because the Spirit Santo is poderoso. God, we thank you for your power. That comes because of your spirit. Father, we give you praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray this prayer. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Amen.